what changed the fire that was lit that changed everything for us that I believe it's a God idea is we said, let's not worry about self help here. What we've offered them is instead of offering them a self help, we've said, Let's activate you towards a mission that matters. Welcome to The Kindling Fire. My name is Troy Mangum. This podcast is here to advance the revolution Jesus started, a revolution of the free, the fire starters, the troublemakers, and the zealots. I interview people who I think are awesome, who have heard that revolutionary call and are going after Jesus with their whole heart. If you listen to this show and join our community, I know God is going to speak to you. I believe God wants to change the world through you, through your unique gifts and talents He's given you. This podcast is here to be a voice of encouragement in your life, a voice that says, with God you can, and with God you will. Let's get rolling. Today on the Kindling Fire, I'm so excited to have my guest on. It is Jeff Zog. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm thrilled to join you. Thanks, Troy, for having me. So I am so excited that if you're not watching the video, I'm standing up. So it's like <laughs> I'm that excited. So I'm like standing. I'm ready to go. This show is going to be amazing. He runs a podcast called Dad Awesome. You, you know, you had me at Dad Awesome. That's I just have to say that. I feel like you say it in the trailer to your podcast. You, you talk about, let's, let's go after, let's be awesome. Like, this is going to be awesome. So I feel like it's, it's right inside of us. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so, it's uh, my, I, I say it so much. My daughter got me a little um, plaque made out of um, old license plates that says, be awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Jeff, tell us a little bit about where you are, um, some other things you're involved in, your family. Just tell, tell the listeners a little about yourself. Yeah, the backdrop, the backstory. Sure. Well, again, grateful to join you today, Troy. And so I'm in Minnesota. So I'm up in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis. I have four little daughters. So age newborn, like three month old through uh, my oldest is about to turn eight. So so I'm being overrun with cute women. And uh, my wife is, uh, we've been married 15 years. Her name's Michelle. So we're, we're grateful. We are, uh, we're after this full time now fatherhood ministry this chapter of our life we're so grateful nine months ago we jumped in full time i'm in my laundry room right now i call it the dad cave and uh not the man cave the dad cave and it's uh because there's work to be done in here like dad life there's work to be i got the laundries right here and i've got some other projects right here so no really grateful to be with you today though and, and love your mission you have started troy you've started a fire within me uh, two and a half years ago i think i found the work you were up to you found some videos of you in your tree house and i was like man this guy fires me up so so grateful for you yeah so we connected uh years ago and i think we actually connected around uh, my book which was sort of very much in process at that time i said yeah y'all let's get back to that in like a year and a half later it's right, like we right. finally got to do that and that was and thank you so much i just as um just as a personal thanks to you thank you for your support like i've always felt like you you were like yes I'm, I'm supporting, I'm championing what God's doing in your life. And I personally want to say thank you for that. We all need that in our lives, no matter what we're doing. Yeah, I think that principle, and you're welcome, you're welcome. But yes, having someone who's cheering for you yeah. is a huge deal. And it can feel like so many areas of our life, there's almost competitiveness or like, yes. hey, you're, you're after that for yourself. And I've got my things I'm after. But having yeah, bro a brother who is from mm -hmm. a, across the country, who yeah. we've never met in person yet, but I'm going to, we're going to RV down your way. So look out, Zog family is coming <laughs> after you. But I just think it's such a gift and we need to do it for others. We want to have someone champion what we're a part of, the vision yeah. God's put on our heart. Uh, I believe we have to be a part of that for others and uh, champion others. So I felt that from you, Troy. So yeah, great. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I, well, guys, I'm so excited to have this conversation uh, with Jeff for their listeners, because we're going to be talking something not, not only about some cool stuff Jeff's doing, but also stuff that I think that's going to help you guys out. Like, let's, let's kind of just jump right in Sweet. with this question. Um, how do you know if your ideas are just a good idea or a God idea? Hmm. Like sometimes that's really hard to, to figure out. And you've had some lots of ideas that have kind of turned into what I would definitely consider God ideas. And so I was just curious, like, you know, how you've kind of discovered that on your journey with the hmm. Lord and trying to create. 
Great question, Troy. And and I, I've been described as a golden retriever. Like I'm like super positive, super all in, super loyal. And I think because of some of my personality type, positivity being high on there is I can fall in love with all of my ideas. I can go after me like, they're all God ideas. They're all making a difference and want to add and add. And I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm just going to like, let's go. I'll add this and add this. And that's another good idea, another good idea. And if we don't have discernment and wisdom on knowing what the God idea is, um, game over, game over. Right. And there's, there's a few, a few just top of mind things. One of them is early on, is this idea connected with pain, with real pain? I do believe most God ideas, um, they're about, um, their connection point. The passion is rooted in pain, something that's wrong. This is kind of the core justice areas, right? That mm -hmm. the, the Bible's full of talking about like, this is a pain point. Now, I want to experience pain in the areas that my heavenly father has said, that's wrong. There's pain yeah. there. So I think that's one of them. Maybe in the early portions, the kind of Genesis moment of God ideas is I think there are, there's real pain attached mm -hmm. and it connects with pain that our heavenly father has said, this is wrong, like justice area type pain. So that, that'd be one. And then uh, we talked about it a moment ago. Are there people cheering for you? Brotherhood, like I using mm -hmm. a litmus test of um, is there, is there a community of friends and family and supporters who are like, that's a God idea. If they're saying, spend more energy there. <laughs> and yeah. if, my, if my most important person in my life, if my best friend, my wife, Michelle, if she's like, there's something there, that's a good signal. That's a good signal that that's a God idea. Um, so there's, uh, is, is there family synchronization behind this idea? That's, that's another good signal. It's a God idea. And then it's the fruit of the idea. It's like the impact filters of like, uh, that's where, again, I think God ideas start to spur of like, oh, this is, this is a multiplication effort, not an addition. Because mm -hmm. when we're thinking addition, like I'll, Jeff will put this effort in and then Jeff will put this effort in and then my friend will put this effort and there's three efforts put in. We get three return. That's a, that's a Jeff scope. That's a Jeff scale idea. Uh, God ideas, you put three bits of effort in and you get a 30 times return. That's, that's right. like, so I think we need to measure and gauge on that side as well. Being like, is there an impact point that's miraculous? Uh, is, is, it, is it natural or is it supernatural? The yeah, and I would say that on that point, that's sort of like evidence of a God idea. Sure. Uh, but sometimes you're not going to be able to see until you actually walk through some doors Holy. in faith, you know, that uh, trying it out. Um, but that's, that's definitely a litmus test. Like, was it, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that to me is a, wow. So what if you don't get those returns, but it's still a God idea? Like, that's a great question. So, <laughs> so at what point does the golden retriever that I described myself, the, the resilience, the perseverance, like so right. many of the efforts, I mean, we can look at Jesus, right? Like whatever he was up to, there was no uh, stories written about it for those first 30 years, right? Is this the, my behind the scenes chapter? I'm not comparing myself and my ministry startup with Jesus, but like, are we in a chapter of the unseen? You plant seeds and there's an unseen before they start to sprout. Yeah. Um, or like, yeah, just gauging that for, to me, a few, a few things. I, I do as a rhythm is one day a month is a prayer day. I take a day. It's usually the first. So it was just two days ago. Uh, the first business day of the month. Ideally, I did this before I had a job that I worked for myself. So I'm working out of again, the dad cave right now. But even when I when I was a, a pastor for those seven years, I inconveniently took time out of my schedule to say one day a month, it's a prayer day, I'm going to reflect back what's God been up to the last 30 days, I'm going to pray forward what's he up to the next 30 days, I'm going to calibrate my life around hearing the voice of God. That to me, those those prayer days kept me going in the season. Uh, again, this fatherhood ministry, I lead dad awesome three and a half years. There's been so many moments that the, the impact, the return is certainly not miraculous sized, even though I use that yeah. as a example. Yeah. And one, maybe there's one ministry that I'm working on that has the God size return in, the, in a short window. But like a lot of the work we do, we have to hear the voice of God. And for me, I have to get silent. I have to get alone. It was a pedal and pray day two days ago. So I did a long bike ride. I'm just praying, stopping at a few of the best coffee shops in Minneapolis, St. Paul. <laughs> um, so so anyways, yes, that, that's a rhythm. Yeah, exactly. I hear you, Lord. Macchiato. Yes, Lord. <laughs> so like yeah, those are the types of filters that help. Again, the friend one, the uh, alone. I mean, Sabbath, the weekly Sabbath is a portion of that. The monthly yeah. day, though, for me is a little different than Sabbath because I'm really trying to tune my priorities and my time and my schedule and energy and effort to what's God putting more focus on. So so two questions. So uh, I'll start with, I'll start with, maybe a, a shorter one. And then, and then I'll actually more as a question, a comment question is in related to the prayer days, do you feel like God has ever said, take this off your, like you're in a moment, you're praying, you're intentional, you're praying about 
past and future? Has God taken things off your plate? Has God put things on your plate in those days? Yeah. So the classic Bob Goff quit that I'm going to quit on Thursday. I'm going to quit something. I'm going to, I'm going to be courageous enough to say no to something, even though I love it. And I I've, I've put there's sunken cost. Uh, the book essentialism, Greg McEwen, like there's sunken cost Cause I put energy effort. I built something. People like this resource yeah. that I offer. Um, I do believe, uh, or yeah. So to use some tangible examples, uh, there was a season where I was doing a text message every single day for about two years. I had a 300 over 300 dads, a daily text, a nudge. I called the dad awesome nudge towards intentional fatherhood, Bible verses to pray, ideas, to ways to connect, uh, just ways to steer and, and, and motivate dads to be a present father. And I, I really like, it was a rhythm that I was, I got a lot of feedback for because when you text 300 people, even if you only have a 5% return of feedback, that's 15 positive feedbacks a day of like, thanks for that message. Um, so, so that'd be an example of one that I just, I knew was not, uh, this is not the season to continue that effort, the energy yeah. invested. And I just really felt it. And I also felt it um, from some, some discernment from my wife of like, this is not, you yeah. need to refocus here instead of there. And then uh, fall retreats, we really were going after some retreats this fall, really felt like God said, it's a season of excavation, not a season of building, even though building gets immediate return from uh, people say, look at you, you're a, you're a ministry entrepreneur that's building something. You get all those uh, way to go yeah. if you build stuff, but if you excavate the foundation, uh, if you're working on foundational stuff, no one gives you any affirmation because they don't see anything. Being Man, that is so good. Oh my gosh. So in, in social media land, I mean, it very much is sort of like, what have you done for me lately? You know, um, or what, how have you inspired me lately? And, and you can get victimized by your own success uh, and expectations. And you really got to be, if you're going after God and you're going after making an impact, you've got to have a discerner. Like you can't just be just pushed by momentum or, and certainly you can't be pushed by what some other person is doing because the juice is where people may not know what I'm saying. When I say the juice, the, the anointing, the, yeah, yeah. the extra zest that God provides in the things is really in where he's guiding you mm -hmm. not. And, and people don't like to hear that because it's sort of like, Oh, successful person. A does B. I need to do B and then I'll be successful person A. And God's like, I won't bless that. <laughs> And we're, we're wired to want the short-term returns and the short-term yeah. returns usually come from, if you do the template, if you do this strategy on this social media and this strategy with your email list and this strategy that it, things grow, things grow. Sure. If you do these strategies and you're recognized as like, you're growing this thing versus is that the path of growth that God had for you? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I want for my daughters as well. I don't want them to just take the path of this is the mold you're supposed to go to, to become wise and to grow and to become a better athlete and become this or that. Mm -hmm. Like I want them to follow God's path. And uh, I, I think about uh, there's, I think it was Levi Lusco, a pastor who's like, he's like an archaeologist. Um, they would never go and use these crazy tools and try to change this discovery that they found. They find these precious rare treasures that are thousands of years old. They've never tried to change them into what they were hoping to find. They would, they would carefully and gently with the right tools unearth what's already there. And that's what I want for the ministry that God's growing in me. That's what I want for my journey as a son of God is to unearth what God has. Um, and that's the God ideas that we're talking about. And that's what I want for my my daughters is to unearth what God has with the right tools and the right pace and the right timing, being patient, not to even show, I think, and again, this is like, um, this is a classic, like what, what are the movies, um, the adventure movies where they're just Indiana Jones, there we go. Yeah, this sure. is classic. <laughs> I mean, in the, in the movies, they find the treasure immediately and they see all of it, but the real life, um, it is, it is such a delicate process of going below ground and finding the treasure that it's unseen. Some of those excavation sites are unseen for um, years and years. You don't find the treasure, but they know it's there and they're slowly unearthing. I want that about me and about what I'm chasing. That I think is a sign of a God idea is it's not rushed. Oh man, that is so good. Or that you feel like it's a train that's leaving the station and you're running after it. That's a, that's another metaphor. Uh, I mean, yeah. like where you're just like, Oh my gosh, if I don't get on this train, I'm going to miss it. And it's like, yeah, man. yeah, you know, God is very much German in that sense. Like it's just, everything's right on time. Perfect timing. Yep. You know, it's just going to be like, when you step, that's when it's, that's when the, the provision or the guidance is.
And, it, and I would add this though, if it's a running after the train, I'm seeing the scene from the greatest showman. He's running and he's <laughs> reaching, jumping onto that train. Cause it's like, but like, it's a, it's, you're not the only one who sees that that train is a God idea and you should run after it. There are yeah, other sure. people in your circle that are like, yeah you catch that trade. It's perfectly timed run. Like yeah. if you're the only one that thinks it's a run scenario, if your wife or if your kids <laughs> or if your friends or if your church is like, this doesn't seem like a run scenario. It's a, it's a yeah, that's pause. A Don't run and grab that trade. Cause it's, I did run and catch a train when I was in college. I, it was a full run, caught a train, jumped on it. And we were actually, we were preparing for the train goes by the football field at our college. We were going to jump on a train and do a banner in the top of the train as we went by a football game. And we were scouting it. And I ran and jumped on that train only two of the four of us made the train and jumping off a train at that speed, a full sprint speed onto the, the rocks that are usually around the train track. Well, one, it's illegal. So I'm admitting to an illegal, um, but two, you got to be careful jumping off a train, moving that fast. This is way off script at this point, Troy, I'm taking this down a <laughs> store, but like, you got to be careful. You're going to get hurt in a hurry if you tumble on those rocks. So catch the right train, catch the right train. <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that analogy um, where you're like, if you are, if you seem to be the only person running and those that God has put in your life, Hear me again, those that God has put in your life, that doesn't mean every relationship you have right. has to agree, but those that are a God relationship in your life, like a wife, like a husband, like, like a mentor, yeah. you know, say yes, and they run with you or they're supporting, cheering you while you're running, great. But if you're running and you keep looking back saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, that's probably not the God train. Uh, it, I had a I had an Asian friend of mine when I was in seminary. He was so wise. He basically said, "The rivers that the rivers that God's cuts run deep." He said, "Normally those rivers have many tributaries that come into the river, and those multi, multi, um, all that water running into this single river uh, creates a deep um, a deeper river." And it has all this input. And he was kind of talking about ministry support. Mm -hmm. So meaning if you feel like it's a God idea and nobody will financially support you yeah. and nobody will back you, but it's all God and nobody's interested. Um, it's sort of like a river without tributaries. And it can, it's probably a very shallow river because it does have a lot of input. Wow. I love that. And I, that has been the gift to my family over the last, it was about 10 months ago, we stepped out of a season of pastoring full-time into full-time fatherhood ministry. And we have three clear streams of support that has allowed our family to do this. And yeah. one of them was our, our local church, our sending church said, we're in for a third of your budget this year. Um, the other was it's an enterprising ministry. So there's a revenue stream attached and that covered a third of the budget. And then friends and family, some fundraising without, without hardly asking covered the other third. So so like we saw that exact, I never thought of it that way though, as far as streams and yeah. like to us, it's been such a gift of like, this is a God idea because of the streams of financial support. So yeah, I love, I love the way you kind of describe the visual of that. Yeah. So, so let's talk about one of your awesome ideas. I'm really excited about it. It's called uh, fathers for the fatherless and to the fatherless for the fatherless yep. Father, yeah. fathers for the fatherless. So um, when you described it to me, described kind of what is happening with it, I, my spirit um, really leapt. Like it was very much like, this is awesome. It had the God idea stamp of approval or whatever yeah. on my heart. Like it really, just hearing about it was like, man, this is an amazing idea. Uh, so let's just start with that. What is it? And then we can talk about kind of what's happened since it yeah. started. Well, thank you for inviting me to share. And so Fathers for the Fatherless was started just over two years ago. So it's our third summer of this ministry initiative. It is a ministry initiative that activates dads to do something hard on behalf of the fatherless. So just like the name would indicate, Fathers for the Fatherless is a team of fathers riding their bikes 100 miles for the fatherless. So it's doing a hard thing physically that takes 12 to 16 weeks to train for, uh, which is a great time period to form some great relationships. Um, mm -hmm. We The secret sauce of Fathers for the Fatherless is no one rides alone. It's not a solo ride. It's a team ride. We all ride together. 
together. And we've had uh, about 100 uh, involved over the past two years. And this year alone, we have over 250 already signed up to join us for rides. These dads have said yes to a mission. And often what causes a dad to say yes to riding 100 miles, it might be fitness. They're like, I want to get in better shape. It might yeah. be fun. Not often does someone invite in this season of life. Again, I'm turning 40 this year, but this season of life in your 30s or 40s, not often does someone say, hey, come do this fun thing with me, even though fun is painful in this case, 100 miles, but sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's <laughs> oh, friendships. Fun. They're, they're like, I'm in because of friends. I want to meet some other friends. Some of the guys said yes, because of fatherhood. It's the only thing we're doing around intentional fatherhood. So they're like, hey, I want to become a more intentional dad. Some it's the father list that causes them to say yes, because they're like, I care about this mission of fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. And then the secret mission, or I guess there's one of the first faith. It's uh, to us, it's a perfect invite your friends, neighbors, coworkers into something on mission to help the fatherless that it has faith at its core, but it doesn't require you to be a Christ follower to be a part of. It's just like, right. no, no, we're doing this from a response of like our, our heavenly father is a father to the fatherless, but like, we're like, man, we, we, we can do this and, and help nudge and invite people into um, learning about Jesus through a bike ride. And then, and then the last, the secret mission, the reason fathers for the fatherless exists is we're believing that a generation of dads are going to wake up to the fact that they are living as if they were fatherless. Um, and the, the, the wake up's going to happen through doing something hard physically to, to potentially doing the hardest thing they've done as a dad. Many of the, I've only been a dad for eight years. The hardest thing I've done as a dad in those eight years is this hundred mile bike ride. And many yeah. dads just need to go do something hard. And it's also vulnerable. I'm raising money, like raising support as a prideful six foot seven man in, <laughs> in the United States, like asking people to join on mission and to open their wallets to the cause of the fatherless. It was a first for me. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're positioning in a, in a vulnerable spot of, Hey, would you join me on this mission in a physically depleted spot of biking hundred miles in a brotherhood, rich spot of guys yeah. together. And then cycling has a really cool, you ride as a Peloton, you're breaking the wind, you're supporting each other, but you're having amazing conversations with the dad next to you. And then you, you switch it up. And when you spend enough time training together, you really go deep, you really go deep with these guys. So, so that's our hope is that we actually awaken this generation of dads to realizing, Oh no, I signed up for a bike ride for the fatherless. And I realized I am living as if I was fatherless. And I have a heavenly father who's like, no way I'm for you. You're not alone. You're not fatherless. You're I'm for you. And then, then these dads go home to their kids learning about their heavenly father. And instead of passing on pain accidentally, most dads are passing on accidental pain as we've talked about yeah. um, to their kids. Now through doing this crazy bike ride called fathers of the fatherless, they're making sure that their kids know you're not fatherless. I'm for you. I'm not passing on pain to you. And you have a heavenly father who's for you. So, so we're trying again, and we're introducing churches. We have church partners now in five cities. We're riding in five cities across the country and we're praying about how is God going to grow this forward. But, but the guys who participate or even the people that volunteer for this ride, just come as our support team they come back again and they bring friends. And the, the, this is our third summer. It's amazing how it's just, we have nearly 200 dads just in Minneapolis alone riding here in a, in a few weeks that's on August 28th. So anyways, we're grateful. That's the, that's the mission. That's what we're up to. Did I leave anything out, Troy, that I shared with you? Uh, I, no, but I'll just add a, uh, ask you a couple of clarifying yeah, yeah. things. So about the fatherless. So does it raise money for a mission or what's the actual thing that it's raising money for? Yes. Yeah, so the dads register, they pay a registration fee just to get in and that gets them their Jersey. Like you see hanging on the wall behind, if you're watching yeah. the YouTube, they, they get some gear and they get support and snacks and we make it fun. So the registration fee goes to all the support, but then the fundraising, they, they commit to $750 of fundraising. Okay. Um, now we've oh, averaged- right Per rider, yeah, per rider. We've we've averaged sixteen hundred per rider over the last two years. So we've uh, we've averaged way above because once they get in, they're they're like, I'm all in, I'm all in, and I love seeing dads all in. All of the money we fundraise goes to partner. Uh, nonprofit ministries that directly serve the fatherless. So we give 50% mm -hmm. local. So we've got this amazing in the foster care ministry here in Minnesota. There's a thousand kids in foster care that, that are wards of the state in Minnesota. A thousand. Mm -hmm. It's tragic. They have no aunt, uncle, grandparent, parent to go back to. They're wards of the state. Our, our dream and vision is through our partner, the Real Hope Project, is to find those kids a forever home. So we're funding a half of the money we raise, which hopefully will be well over $1,000, or $100,000. Uh, our, our prayer this year is we're raising a million dollars for the fatherless with all the cities. Um, but half the money stays local, half goes global through our partner, Venture, who supports orphanages in Southeast Asia. So the fatherless in that area of the country. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're 
we're so, so grateful for those partners. So all that money that we raise, though, goes through uh, partner ministries that directly serve the fatherless. So um, so if there's if there are listeners that are like, they're actually involved in a church, they're a pastor or they're an active member of their church, and they're like, man, that sounds awesome. Like, what would, like, how would they engage? Like, how would they find out about how to bring it to their church or offer it through their church because it's multiple dates through the year it's not just yep. a single day yeah okay yeah we we track all through the fall so we're going to be zog families traveling to all five of these cities this fall and we're we're already in conversations with about a dozen other cities that are they're interested so we're super grateful so so definitely track with us message us you can go to uh, just it's f letter f number four letter f f for f dot bike f for f dot bike will get you to our website there's an inquiry form if you want to add a ride in a city near you so you can just hop right in and, and fill out a request form but we just look for five uh dads on our local lead team to say i'll volunteer and help make this thing happen so five dads that are the movers and shakers the guys who say i'll go first and i love seeing uh when men say i'll go first it's really yeah, fun yeah. so i have a team in all five of these cities that are like i'll go first and they're inviters they find some local sponsor dollars they find the yeah. route locally and they they make sure it's safe and fun and they grow the event so that's how we picked these five cities is there's a local team and that's yeah. all we need to take steps forward and then follow us on uh instagram at fathers of the fatherless that'll you can share in the story and kind of be in the loop uh, this year as well yeah so guys if you're listening to the kindling fire you are a fire starter you have been recruited you already are one of those that are on the front edge of trying to obey the lord and to do amazing things and so if this is spurring you on i want you to to go to this website and and sponsor a ride in your city like, especially if you're a bike rider, like if you, if you, you don't have to be, but I mean, it'd be good if you probably ride, that's a hundred miles. It's not, well, let me, let me jump in there, Troy. So half of our riders, about 50 or brand new cyclists did not have Seriously. a road bike. They signed up without a road bike. They show up at the first training ride with a hybrid or a mountain bike or a, just a cruiser. And then they're like, okay, I better look on Craigslist to find a three or $400 bike. That's it, awesome. It, road bikes. It's an investment. You got to, you know, yeah. it's not, they're not, they're not cheap, cheap, but like, uh, it's amazing that half our team were brand new cyclists. And then they yeah. went from couch, literally couch. They've ridden a 10 mile ride to century. And we, we help with training plans and stuff to, we, we design the whole experience for the rookie cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to go on the record as pray that you will get a bike sponsor for this event or multiple that will just donate bikes to people that have no bikes just to be a part of it. Um, that would be amazing. So that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to put that on the record. So, yes. hey, so so speaking of the things we were talking about, about a God idea and a good idea. Can you, can you shape a little bit of this? Because this is accelerated a lot faster, I think, than you expected. Yep. Is that true? Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and I think part of it is um, so many of the resources that I was creating for the first year and a half of the ministry, Dad Awesome, is around intentional dads saying, I want to be more intentional. Intentional yeah. dads saying, it's almost in the self-help category of, I want to help myself be a more intentional dad. So I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm going to do a small group. I'm going to do this daily text message. I'm going to do this Bible challenge. Like we did these challenges and we did these, but it's all in the category of like, curriculum or learning or growth or podcasting to make me a more intentional dad, what changed the fire that was lit that changed everything for us that I believe it's a God idea is we said, let's not worry about self-help here. Let's not worry about, even though it's important to become a more intentional dad, to become dad awesome for your kids is important. There's so many people that are they're dialed in. They're in the trenches. They're working hard. They're, they're, they're trying to stay married. They're trying to like be a good neighbor. They're trying. And, and what we're, we've offered them is instead of offering them a self-help, we've said, let's activate you towards a mission that matters. And that's what we do. We say, hey, fatherlessness is an epidemic that is wrong. And you know it's wrong. And they're like, yes, we know it's wrong. And we said, let's go do something epic to help end that. And so that's the difference. We put up, we light a fire about somebody else. It's not about the dad. It's not about the dad. Although we weave dad awesome resources through the sure. whole 16 weeks. So they get all these nudges about intentional fatherhood, but it's not about that. It's not about self-help. It's about active. You're being activated with some brothers towards a mission. So it's almost in the category of, Hey, let's go on this mission trip together to this other country, or let's go do this thing together. But it's in our backyard. So our kids get to cheer for us. Our kids get to see us train and they know my daughter's raised. They, they do fundraising for me they, they sell with their bikes in the little trailer and cooler they sell sparkling water and popsicles for the fatherless <laughs> they, they fundraise um so it's a family mission but but i think that's what changed with this being a god idea is we just saw 
Oh my goodness. And we saw who are we reaching? We saw real stories, real testimonies of lives changed because yeah. we're reaching single dads, uh, divorced dads, dads who um, are grandpas, dads who are rookie dads, dads who just lost a baby. And I don't actually have a kid on the home front, but they're grieving. They're in a season of loss as a dad, uh, dads who are recently separated, dads who go to church, dads who don't go to church. We see a diverse group of dads that are all like, I am I, that mission matters and I want to be a part of it and I want to invest yeah. my time and my energy. So that's what that to me was the God idea of like, whoa, this is bigger than anything I created here. <laughs> There's something here. Yeah, man. I, gosh, I, I might just shout because I'm so freaking <laughs> excited that the, the guys, this is the key. This is the key. Find a mission. God has got a mission for you. God has got a purpose that helps others. You will be taken care of in the process. Don't worry about yourself anymore. I'm telling you guys, if you're listening to this podcast or reading whatever books are out there or whatever, most of the time I'm guilty of it as well. You're just like, I have a deficit, fill the, fill the hole, fill the gut, fill, fill me, fill me, fill me. I need stuff. I need stuff. And you will find if you do it long enough, you're like, why? Wow, there's still a hole. I guess I need more teaching. You don't need more teaching, guys. You need a mission. You need a purpose. You need a mission. And this is such a powerful example of why it's got the God's breath on it. Because, I mean, Jesus said at the very end in Matthew 28, he was like, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Go into all, have a purpose that's outward focused, that extends the kingdom of God. And you will find life. And there yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so Troy, and, and also though, it, you don't have to be an entrepreneur. God doesn't have to deposit a brand new mission within you because the, the ways your eyes are shining right now, Troy, like if God hadn't deposited a mission in your heart that you're racing after that I'm yeah. cheering for, if you, you would join my mission, like you totally would. Like it's, it's Jonathan and his armor bear. His armor bear had no vision, no mission. He had no weapons either, but he went with Jonathan and they scaled up there and they took down an entire army. So we, we can look for, we don't have to look for the original God idea. Mm -hmm that I can be the entrepreneur and I can create the new website and I can rally like guys, shiny eyes matter. And what Troy just did of just like, I could shout for this mission, like his eyes are shining. And you know what happens when us dads have a mission that breaks our heart that we're going after when any of us are just like, I am going after that because it matters. I have my mission and it doesn't have to be ours. It could be again, somebody else's that we're supporting our kids their life trajectory is completely different if they have a dad whose eyes shine and heart breaks mm -hmm. for something that matters, that they have a mission. And again, mm -hmm. there are missions all around you. You spend 15 minutes on Google in your city saying, well, who's doing something in this? Who's doing something? You'll find a leader who has been desperately praying for and needing a armor bearer like Jonathan had to go after that mission. So, so do not... Do not get stuck in analysis paralysis of like, I don't know the thing. Maybe I should read six more books. Maybe I should listen to more podcasts about starting stuff. Um, you are a fire starter. And you also, right now though, before God gives you your idea for your own fire to start, he might load some wood in your arms and say, walk over to their campfire and make it three times as big because of the passions and skills and gifts I've given you. So so that I just want to add that side of like, just go, just go. Like, this is not a hold back season. Yeah, and I... And I and, and I've seen the power of that to affect family. Mm -hmm. when, when Kathy and I went on mission, on real mission, <laughs> but not real mission, I should say that. On, uh, we were missionaries, we were yeah. preaching the gospel and all that stuff. The thing that my daughter noticed, my youngest daughter, was that it was so cool because we were all doing it. We were doing one thing together. We were, that's what we were about. And, and, and now we're kind of back in the suburbs and all this other stuff. And I've got my thing, but, you know, my kids aren't like champion my podcast and all this stuff there are other things that your family can get around <clears throat> that that i'm telling you guys it, you want to have not only your your spark lit by the lord's purposes but you want that fire to catch down to your kids and your wife in the whole community because they're like yeah that's it let's go for it and that's where differences really is made yep that's so good jeff man i'm so excited that that we got to talk about this and, and just spur guys on. Uh, if people want to kind of follow up with like, you, you've talked or just give the websites again, like where do we, where do we find more information about what dad awesome as well as fathers for the fatherless? Yeah, the websites uh, are dadawesome.org for the podcast, small group curriculum, all those kind of things. And then F 
four, number F, F. So it's F4F.bike is the other one. Then we're at Fathers of the Fatherless on Instagram and at Dad Awesome on Instagram. So yeah, we'd love to engage and uh, just cheer you on. And I, there's no doubt that the path that Dad Awesome is on and Fathers of the Fatherless, Troy, and all of the efforts from, from your book, which we're just thrilled to, that we just recently recommended to all of our listeners, <laughs> Fatherhood Face Plants, and then, and then your ministry, the Kindling Fire, like, let's go. We're going to be teaming yeah, up good. in bigger ways. So Absolutely. let's do it. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to actually see you in person when you get show up in your RV and your six foot seven self. <laughs> but uh, but look, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been amazing. And uh, and Jeff, just keep at it, man. Keep burning, brother. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. Hey, if you did like it, it would be really helpful if you want to send us a review over on iTunes. That would be really cool. And if you want to connect, go over to Instagram, search Troy Mangum or The Kindling Fire, and we can connect there, and that would be a great way to kind of stay in touch. I am doing a YouTube channel, so we do video formats of these podcasts, and we'd love to have you look there. Okay, guys, until next time, be awesome.